In this screencast, we will take a look at how we can use process data in order to develop a, an appropriate selection of tuning parameters for a process that is desired to be controlled. So here we are given information about a test that was done where the controller output was decreased from 57 to 54 percent CO instantaneously. And as a result of changing that controller output, you are causing a change in your output variable. In this case, the temperature of a process fluid in a heat exchanger. Based on this information from this test, how can we develop appropriate parameters for PI control using the Cohen Kuhn tuning methodology? So, Cohen Kuhn is one of many types of tuning parameter correlations that is based on open loop testing. And an open loop test is what we have just described earlier, which is basically the controller being on manual and an adjustment being made to that controller. Because if you think about how the controller works, is the controller sends its signal to the valve. So therefore, by adjusting the controller output, you are adjusting the openness of the valve. Whether or not it is opening or closing when you go from 57 to 54% is a function of whether or not the valve fails open or fails closed. So an important point to remember here is just because you are decreasing controller output does not mean that you are closing your valve more and decreasing the amount of your manipulated variable. So many of these open loop tests, what the goal is, is to find a transfer function that can take into account the effects of the valve, the sensor, and the process which is what the open loop test accomplishes. So in many cases, depending on your tuning perimeter methodology, they are going to require you to turn this transfer function into a particular form, whether it be first order, or first order plus dead time, second order plus dead time, second order integrating process, etc. For the sake of the one that we're doing here, for Cohen Kuhn, and one of the more common techniques is we're looking at trying to make this process a first order plus dead time process. So an important point to remember with the first order plus dead time process is that the corresponding transfer function is k e to the negative theta s over tau s plus 1. And if you look at the Cohen Kuhn tuning parameter table, what you'll notice is that the kc values contain tau, theta, and k, all the three parameters we get from this model. And for the tau i and tau d, what you'll notice is they contain just theta and tau, also the two parameters we get here. So what we now need to do is develop a transfer function from our data that can be turned into a first order plus dead time process. So because of the fact that we have made a step change in the controller output, this method is often known as the step test method. Another name for this is the process reaction curve method. The reason why it's called the process reaction curve method is because the figure that we shows how the process reacts with change in the controller, hence this is the process reaction curve. So there are a whole host of different ways in order to find the three relevant FOPTI parameters, the gain, the dead time, and the time constant. Some methods are more graphical in nature, and some methods focus more on the time where the process has gone a certain percentage of the way from going from its starting point to its finishing point. So in this case, we're going to use a more graphical approach. So what we're going to do here is attempt to connect the data points. And what we're going to take advantage of here is we first have to find the inflection point. And here, we'll just estimate the inflection point as somewhere around here. The next step is we have to develop a tangent line that runs through the inflection point. And then what we do is take a look at where the process crosses the initial value and the final value. So if we look at this, it crosses the initial value at approximately t equals 5 minutes. So therefore, this value represents theta in the transfer function for the flop to t. And then we look at where it crosses here. We'll say that this is 9. And this value represents the magnitude of tau minus theta. So therefore, since theta is 5, that means that tau is going to be 4. So we have theta and we have tau. The gain we find by the definition of change in output over change in input. 
And if you recall, what happened here is, is we had a change in input from 57 to 54. So therefore, the change in our input value went down by negative 3. And as we look here, our process started at 55 but ended at 53.2. So therefore, the gain is negative 1.8 over negative 3, which is just 0 0.6. So with all this information, we have developed our FOPTT here as the gain 0 0.6 e to the negative 5s, the dead time, over 4s plus 1, where tau is 4. So we were looking to try to develop the tuning parameters for a PI controller. KC will be about 1.34% controller output per percent transmitter output. So when we put this all together, we end up with a tau i of 4.96 minutes. The reason why it's minutes is because the graph that we had before had its units in minutes. Therefore, our analysis of tau and theta were done in minutes. So before we wrap up the screencast, we'll talk briefly about some of the disadvantages of the process reaction curve. The first is disturbances are problematic. The reason why is the fact that we are attempting to make a step change in the controller output and see how the process responds. However, if there are any disturbances that affect the data, it's going to impact what's happening because the transfer function we're trying to find, which is the multiplication of the process, the sensor transmitter, and the valve, will get a bit lost and muddled by the presence of the disturbance. Additionally, the second issue is the fact that the calibration of the controller is important, and this is because we have to ensure the fact that the change in percent controller output is consistent, otherwise this could become potentially dependent on whether or not you did an increase or a decrease, or where this increase or decrease occurred. Another potential issue is the fact that if any of these things are significantly nonlinear, and somewhat related is the fact that if the process doesn't represent a first order plus dead time, so if, if any of these issues happen, that can influence the accuracy of the results that you get. And fourth and finally, this method does not really work very well for an unstable process because there is no control. So therefore, if there is no control, this process will just continue acting unstably. So therefore, this to be aware of the fact that this method is not the only method. For example, if Ziegler-Nichols analysis involves continuous cycling, there are a host of other methods which use other methodologies in order to determine the tuning parameters. So in this screencast, we showed how we can use process data from an open loop system, in other words, no control being put upon it, in order to develop appropriate tuning parameters. And again, these tuning parameters serve only as a beginning. As you go into the completing research on this or completing experimentation on this, fine tuning is most likely going to be necessary. These tuning parameters represent a nice start.